Yeah, here we are, Friday. Time to do a new video for y'all. And uh, what did I get done this week? Well, remember last week I was working away on that facility over there. Well, I got that finished to my satisfaction. I'll take you. I'll take a walk over there and show it to you. The I did finish up the welding in around here and the welding in around there. Even found a bunch of pinholes, which is a good thing. Then I stopped welding. I, I stopped on that. And I decided I'd go ahead and do some mechanical work. So I've got the oil pan on, and I've got the uh, clutch master and slave cylinders on, and that's kind of where it ended today. And put a couple of new motor mounts in and a transmission mount. I'll give you a look, quick look over at the uh, facility, as some people call it. And I've got all... Everything that I want to get in here for the winter is in the uh, the big boat, the sailboat, the Mercedes, the Beamer, and my Honda. It's a little bit dark back in this corner. My Honda and the uh, two golf carts, and then there's a little Sam's little bike is right over there where that. Can't really see it very well, but everything sort of fits in nice. And then in the summertime, in the wintertime, I never do very much in here. Sam does sometimes, but we can move a car out and let him work away at it. And we've got that all built up there for holding all the junk, a junk holding space. Now I did talk about putting a lift in here. Whether I do or not, we'll see. Like I was thinking about putting a four post lift in and then I can put a car up and then the car underneath it or whatever I need to do and then I could also roll a couple of those golf carts into uh, up to the upstairs or the motorcycles and stuff like that make it easier to get stuff up and down anyway this is what it's got done for this year I think next year I'll think about a lift because everything's in here now and and we're doing okay so my friend Helen she says uh, I'm a collector because once you own more than one, more than three, one, two, three in the garage there, and four is the one I drive. Once you own more than three, then you're a collector. So, I guess I'm a happy collector. Anyhow, stick around. You'll see what I see. What else I accomplished, and see how I put that together. And another nice day down here in PEI. So I'll see you later. Well, now here I am, starting another week. And it seems to be that I'm not done working on that second floor in the other shop yet. So I'll look at this quickly. Then I think we're uh, back to being a woodworker, not a metal worker. But shouldn't be too much longer. I'm back on the grind here. Yeah, there. That's me. Anyhow, the other day I took a picture of uh, my new shirt here and it didn't come out very well. There you are. Let's say Lauren's Weld Shop. Thanks, Carolyn. Did a nice job on that. Yeah, back at it here. The uh, Saturday, another week. Anyway, the uh, these things here for putting leg bolts in. So you see, I've got one there and one there, one there, one there. So I countersink them. Ugh, where am I down here? Countersink them with one of these to make a flat place for the washer to sit. Then. I drill it with this this drill here, pretty long drill, down to that about that tape line there, that much drilled in. Then put a bit of the Magic Elixir WD-40 down the hole, and it makes it so that the uh, bolt will get in there pretty good. And I tried using my little impact driver like that thing, but that doesn't have the power for it, so I put it on the air driver. And that drives them in pretty good. Anyway, I'll carry on. Put two up there, two underneath there, and then that'll be this side done. Then I have to do the other side. Then I'll think about how to cross brace this, because I was thinking about, hmm, I discussed. I said I was gonna nail it onto the wall, but I think I'll leave it freestanding without being connected to that wall there. That wall there which is the outside wall of the shop, metal. So I think I'll have to put a cross brace, 
across here and up, same idea as that. But I've got those metal things that I can use for that because I think that'll be uh, the structure is a little bit more rigid that way. It won't be falling backwards and forwards that way as much as it'd be falling backwards and forwards this way. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, yeah, there it is. That's all bag bolts holding everything. There's a couple underneath there where you can see those sawdust. Then I put uh, these angle iron metal things that came with the shop on this back wall here to uh, so cross brace it from swinging that way. Whoops. Going back and forth that way. That's a good cross brace for that. And then I've got one on the other wall here. That's a good cross brace there. Now remember I promised I'd make that one opposite of this one. But I made them the same and I put this other cross brace on there. So that just sort of looks good. I don't know. It looks good, doesn't it? Maybe. Who cares? I care. Now I was just going to make a bunch of 16 inch pieces here. But that's 16 minus the width of a 2x4 to go center to center to center. But they're not exactly the same all the way along. You know, that's the way it's got together. So I'll just measure this end and measure this other end, take the average and um, cut each piece individually to fit that size. Then that should work all right. Yeah, there we are. So there's half of it done. Now I have to do the other half. So it takes one 12 foot 2 by 10 to do this. I guess I could have figured that out pretty easily because one 12 foot 2 by 10 is 12 feet. <coughs> and there's a few inches left over. Excuse me. That many inches left over. Anyhow, I'll get another 2 by 10 and do the next bit. Yeah, there it is. It's the, uh, let me see. Those cross beams are in all the way along, and this thing's solid. So now I gotta climb on top there and do the, uh, whatever you call that. Do the, whatever you call that. I gotta toenail them in on this thing all the way along there, on both beams, so that they'll be solid. Anyhow, that's next. Yeah, there, I've got them all toenailed in all the way along everywhere using that thing and so it's all pretty damn solid now and I stood on the top of a ladder with my body up between I tried climbing that ladder up there and getting on top and uh, a little bit shaky for me so now it's time to put the flooring up and then it's uh, hmm, pretty well done we'll see yeah so once again the tractor is saves me from being broken or being too broken. I had to lift them all on to the loader, but once they're up, that really gets them up high pretty quick, quick and easy. Just want to make sure that if they don't slide back and come down and chop off the operator's head, eh? So anyway, I did it. I made it. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes us construction experts here forget a few essential things. Now, I forgot to square the damn thing up before I nailed it all down. Luckily, it's pretty square. It's off about a quarter inch on the edges, so I guess I can live with that. The, it's lucky it wasn't uh, shaped like a triangle. Now, always remember to check the square before you nail it all together. Hmm, there you go. Yeah, so there, that's uh, three of those sheets are screwed down that one that one whoops point right that one that one and that one it takes about uh, 45 screws per sheet and they very kindly put a little x everywhere you're supposed to put a screw but it's really set up for the for the centers going that way instead of this way but that's all right so there you get all the screws all the screws in and, and those X's actually line up on the boards underneath or on the joist underneath. Must have done something right. 
Yeah, there you get a, a view from the balcony now. I'll have to open the door a bit more. I have to put a rail, figure out a railing to put along that edge there so I don't fall off it. And I put the, uh, I made the boards come up to it within a half inch of that edge. And then at the back here, there's a little bit of a gap because there's 12 feet plus two two by four, so 12 feet, that's 144 plus three inches is 147 inches and these things here are only 47 and a half each so a little bit of a gap right there and i'll put a two by four across that and that'll give me something not to knock up against so it stops stuff from rolling in there anyway that's good enough for now yeah so there's in case you're wondering about that gap that's sitting there between the lengthwise boards the instructions say to leave a tenth of an inch gap at the end of the boards for uh, expansion so nothing gets nothing starts getting hot and buckling and I guess going this way here the expansion must be uh, looked after in the in the tongue and groove bit anyway that's why it's there yeah there the whole thing is all screwed down now you can come up here and have a a hole down if you wanted to as long as it didn't fall off the edge. Anyway, actually the sound wouldn't be too good. It'd be kind of an echoey place in here. Ah, a little bit of a rain shower going again, so I'll have to pull the tractor in and get the car in behind it, and that'll be it for the day. Yeah, there we go. I'll go over and stand in the corner here where you can see the whole thing. So bashing my head too bad. Yeah, so here we are. Got a railing up, such as it may be. I left it open in the middle there so I can, uh, <clears throat> the, the lift will go out there and I'll be able to drive things up. I'll figure out a gate for that at some point in the future. I took part of that pipe down, it's over in the corner there. So now, that's pretty well it. The, uh, the fence is plenty strong, you won't be able to go through that. And I'm fairly happy with it all. This thing here, I have to put a, a board along here of some sort. I get a three quarter inch piece of board and put it in there. And then that'll be done, done, done. But likely I'll start putting some stuff up here tomorrow and start cleaning out the, the mess down there and make it so things are looking good up here. Like I've got lots of old tires and everything like that from up here out of the way. Yeah, then when I finish with that, I'll be back on the TR7. So. A little interlude from the TR7, not too long. All for now. Yeah, yeah, there you are. That's uh, one loft built, or storage, or whatever you want to call it. I'll get some lights and I'll put them in down below here, underneath. They can just hook into the existing electricity there and uh, they string along pretty nice and easy. And then that'll make it plenty lit in here, and maybe I'll put my tool bench, my workbench right here. Whoops, where am I pointing? I'll put my workbench right here again, underneath here, with lots of light, and that'll be a good spot for it. There we go. All is good. Yeah, yeah, so apparently the uh, building it is the easy part. The moving everything up there gets a little bit of a challenge. So I've got the motor for the boat. Well, that's only a little two and a half horsepower two-stroke thing. It's about, likely about as old as I am. And then I put up all the stuff that was around here. Now there's still a pile of junk left there, but I don't know that there might be some garbage there underneath all that. We'll take a look. But as I get up here, let me see, I'll get up to the top here. All that pile there is TR7 parts underneath the hood. And then there's tires, tires, tires. So I've got the tires for the TR7 are those ones. That set of tires, where am I pointing now? That set of tires was on the BMW when I moved it across the country. That set of tires there, that's the original BMW tires. And the last set of tires, those are Sarah's winter tires that she'll put on her car one of these days. So there's still lots more room up here to put stuff. I'll keep on putting stuff.
Yeah, yeah, the, there you are. Hasn't changed much since yesterday, except that that's all filled up up there now. Well, not filled, but there's lots of the junk is up there. And I did bring my uh, workbench in again, and I put it right in there, which is a good spot for it. There's room. I measured it, and there's room to slide the sailboat into here. And I'll put the golf carts underneath there, and then I've got room out here for cars. That should be okay, and then... Hmm, what will I do with the, with the big boat? The big boat, I might slide it in here too. We'll just see. Yeah, yeah, so there now, that side of the shop is nice and cleaned up. And sort of ready, ready to go. A little bit more dust up there. Up above is all right. This side of the shop, hmm, still needs some more cleaning, eh? I guess that's tomorrow's job. I thought I'd be done with it all today, but I got a bit lazy. So, anyhow, we'll get it done tomorrow, I hope. And then we'll get back to grinding away on the other thing. Yeah, now, time to start moving some of this stuff in. So I've got the pressure on top of that. And it'll go in slot number three. Slots number one and two have golf carts in them. So I'll see if I can slide that sailboat into here. It'll come up to about here somewhere. And then... Uh, after that goes in, then I'll think about getting the, the big boat in and worry about the cars and stuff. Yeah, so failure number one. I now have a golf cart in slot number three. Maybe I'll put numbers on them, eh? One, two, and three. So, the boat, sailboat, I'll put it in slot number one here which is eight feet wide. There's an eight foot span, eight foot span, and then a six foot span there. So this would be wide enough to slide that into. So then I had to move that saw down that way. And that should, should work. We'll see what happens. You never know until it's done. Yeah, and then for all you that are wondering, that's the motor out of a upside down BMW 2002-1968 model. So, last time I, well it turned when I put it in here, but who knows, it's been 20 years since I've tried to look, to look at it. Yeah, yeah, here's some live action. Yeah, yeah, I had a little sneezing fit there. Anyway, there that boat is in. And uh, I'm going to put those... Well, first off, this boat is in. And it looks like there's room right there for uh, another golf cart if I needed to. Or I'll put a lawnmower in there, I guess. That thing there, I'll kind of slide it over. I'll lift it up on those, those things. Then I'll slide it... Uh, towards the wall, that'll give me more room here until springtime. And uh, the little uh, rub-a-dub tub that I have along with that tube there can go up on top, out of the way. And that's good for the winter in here, out of the weather. Yeah, there, that's in there now. Now in the summer, this place is too cold to work on in the winter, work on anything in the winter anyhow, so that can get squeezed up against the workbench all right. And then everything gets squeezed in there okay. So now, do I have room for a couple of cars and a tractor? Well, I, all I need is room for two cars, and I'm pretty sure I have room for two cars. I'll put, I'll slide the Mercedes up here and then just put the BMW, BMW in up next to that. And then I'll put the tractor in the tent for the winter. That'll keep it out of the snow. Huh. 
I guess everything's looked after. Yeah, now that would be a shop full. There is room left over. I can get around in here. Up there, there's room. So, two cars plus two boats plus two golf carts. <laughs> what else is in there? And two motorcycles. Everything comes in twos. It's like Noah's Ark, eh? Anyway, the. Uh, that's all that's going to get for now. Likely when winter comes, I'll put this this car, the Mercedes, into the tent and zip it down. And then I'll, use, I'll uh, park the, the brown car, the BMW, right in there in that slot. And then I'll bring the tractor in and keep the tractor here for the winter because it's easier to, if I need electricity, to plug it in or something like that. It's all set to go. So, that would be... The shop revamped for now. One of these days I'll see about that car lift I was talking about. Don't have to rush about it now because there's lots, lots of room for everything. Well, there. I'm glad to get those bolts in out of the weather anyhow because they they don't like sitting around and outside in the winter too much. Especially that sailboat. It's fiberglass. There you go. All for that. Yeah, now I'm back. Back on back on track here maybe well, who knows oh, yeah, I didn't do a I've been contacting a guy down in New York about these carburetors and then he seems to lose touch with me so I'll try him again later today if I remember and the bad thing the worst part of it is that you know he'll do something then he'll forget and then I'll do something and I'll forget so we all forget everybody forgets anyway we'll get something done about it they're called SU carburetors, and they're, oh, there's a number on them. I forget what it is, though, but anyhow, we'll see if I can get something happening with them. Then, the next thing is, uh, well, I could carry her on around here and fix up that rust thing on, underneath there, and then underneath here, and then work towards the front on this side. And that would be all the steel work done on the body. Or I could do something different for a while and just see what I have for mechanical bits here. I think I'll do something different for a while. See what goes. Yeah, so I have a box of parts here from British North East, I think they're called. Anyway, first ones are lower gasket set, which I will do. And this stuff here is all sorts of bushings and stuff in there. Those are tie rod ends and lower ball joints. Those things there are rear wheel bearings. Then there's brake caliper sets for the rear. That blue box in behind there has got, uh, I don't know what the hell's in that, brake shoes for the rear, which are shoes, like old style shoes. This stuff here is for setting the springs on when I put the new springs that I have. That'd be a, uh, what the hell is that? Clutch master set. A couple of uh, gas shocks and stuff. I have the springs over there. And then uh, brake line, the rubber hose brake lines. Plus a few candies. I ate one of them. And they're not bad candies. So there. Now, first thing to do is I've got this gasket set for the underneath here and that's going to go, can you see any of that? No. Wait till I get a better position here. There. Now you can see it. So th I've had this, this, uh, what do you call that? That's the oil pan. I've had that off before and I don't have any bolts put back into it yet. Just a couple to hold it on loose. Now it has... When you put that back on, then you gotta, you have to, put on the motor mount, which I have new motor mounts somewhere on the planet for the car. So one of the motor mounts goes right there. Can you see that? Maybe, no, right there, in between that and the wall. Second motor mount goes onto this 
thing right here, which is the, uh, well, well, all the steering and stuff goes on there. So that's right here is where the motor mount goes on there. So I have a new one of those. And it hooks up to the back side of this thing here, which sort of cradles the motor like that. And then the motor mount sits on there. Now the third mount is on the back here somewhere, right underneath, right in, right here. And this is the, uh, that's the mount for, for the rear of the transmission. So if you're going to do one, you might as well do them all. And they're not, they're not too tough to do, we hope. But the first thing I'll do is I'll pull this uh, pan. Now I have, maybe in an earlier episode you noticed, or maybe you didn't notice, I pulled the pan and I took a couple of the, uh, what do you call them, the rod cap bearings, a couple of rod cap bearings off, and I took one of the main bearings off just to check and see if they were okay. And they look okay. There's nothing, no, no wear marks on them, and uh, they look like they're good. So I'm going to put it back together and uh, put the new gasket in there. Somebody had taken it apart before, and they had neglected to put one of the bolts in the back of it, so it was leaking oil, of course. And then blah, 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 blah. But I have new gaskets for lots of stuff, including that... Uh, manifold there and there's more gaskets in the lower set i don't know where the hell they go they must go in here on the oil pump and stuff like that which i don't know if i'll take that apart yet might take it apart someday but i do have a new slave cylinder for the uh, clutch assembly and i have other stuff so We'll, we'll just work at it and see what happens. Then once I get it, uh, oh, once I get all those pieces on there, I'll be able to maybe get it started after I get parts for the carburetor. And then we'll just see what it's like. Because if I can get it sort of uh, put back together so it'll roll, then I can roll it in and out of here if I need to. Anyhow, that's all. That's the plan for now. Yeah, so there's the uh, oil pan off. And it looks like it's clean inside now. It was really yucky when I first took it off of there. And here's the uh, inside underneath. So this is where the, that's the oil, bottom of the oil suction pump there. And it goes up into that filter, which I need a new one of. And then I got to clean off all this gasket around here and stick it all back together again and that'll be that'll be good those things there when Paul was here we took them off and had a look inside there and it looks good anyway I'll carry on yeah so removing an old gasket can be a really tedious affair but that side is done and I used my very special uh, I gotta open this need two hands for this I used my very special knife for to do all that. Coming in there. A little bit more to clean right there. That's that rubber stuff that's left over from the last time it had a gasket on there. And for the inside of the motor, like up in here, you got to clean all that off of there all the way around, which is tremendously tedious trying to work upside down with your head. So I built myself a little tool. I just took a half a razor blade. Well, I broke a razor blade in half and then pulled it into little vice grips and it seems to work pretty good. Anyway, I'll carry on. Yeah, so now I've got that all cleaned off pretty well. I'll have another, another go at it before I put on the final. Then this thing here, the um, I took off the oil filter, which is over on the bench over there, and this hole, see that hole? There's a great big hole there, right there. Now, when I took it apart before, here I'm dripping oil on my camera. Mm hmm, can't do that. Anyhow, when I was, took it off before, I noticed that there was no bolt on this hole here, and 
the reason I guess it didn't ever get a bolt on because you have to take the starter off to be able to get that bolt in. The same as over here. There's a big hole there and a big hole here and you put a bolt on the right through and, and uh, washer on the other side. And you can't get into that without the starter being off. So, got to take the starter off. I've just had the car down and I, and I uh, what did I do? I uh, unhooked the battery so I wouldn't be jolting myself too badly. Anyway, here we go. I'll take that starter off and I'll just put it on the bench until such time as I need to. Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> hmm. Now, excuse me. To get that starter off, one bolt, the bottom bolt, you get that out from underneath. And the top bolt, you have to get it out from above with a very long extension. Like I put this, they're 9 16th or 14 millimeter. But I got an extension that long to reach into it. And then you can get a 9 16th inch wrench, which I had somewhere in my hand, uh, now gone missing. There it is right here. You can get a 9 16th inch wrench on the back side of it. Now I'll put the car back up in the air and with the car up in the air I should be able to uh, pull that starter off there I hope. We'll see what happens. Going up. Yeah so here's the starter now on the those two bolts hold it and I've had it apart before and the the gear here on the Bendix ring and blah 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 it all seems to be okay. I didn't take this part apart because I didn't want to ruin anything in case of something in there ruinable. But right here, this connection and this connection, my fingers are all black. I'll point with something else. So, this connection here, I'll point over here. This connector here and this connector here, they're very, very loose with the, uh, the line that comes in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder a thing on there and put a wire out. And solder a thing on there and put a wire out so that I can just connect them using a like a different type of connector that'll hold properly. We'll see how that works out, but I'll get there that get to that later. So for now, I got this all cleaned off and ready to go. I'll take another quick look at it, make sure everything's good. Let this thing here drop out of the way again. Let this thing here drop out of the way because I mean, that's up in the way of everything there. This is your uh, rack and pinion steering here. Got the light in front of it. Then I'll put that oil pan back on there, and that should be okay. That'll make life happy. There's another bolt that should go through right here that that uh, isn't hasn't uh, didn't have a bolt in it, but I'll put that in. Go through the starter. Should be three bolts holding the starter together instead of just two. There now. Anyhow, carry on. So, so here's the uh, lower mounter. Mm, blah, blah, blah. New lips here. Here's the lower motor mount. Somebody has put a fairly bad coat of green paint on there. So I wire brushed it all off and I'll just put a bad coat of black paint on there over the top of it. There. That's all nice and black again. I think it came out of the factory black. It's kind of a Kind of in rough shape that thing, but it looks like the metal is okay, and I pounded it a bunch. It doesn't, uh, nothing go through it, so before I put that starter on, I'm going to paint that thing black too, because that ugly yellow color doesn't make it for me. There you go. Yeah, so there's the uh, new gasket. Whoops, where is it? Right there. And it fits on there, right? Fits on there properly. So I'll find some gasket goop, which I think I have buckets full of it up here somewhere. Yeah, there's there's a bucket full of gasket goop there, so I'll get the right stuff and do it. Give it a little bit of a gasket goop, and then I'll put that on there. Sometimes I use dental floss to hold these things in place, but I think the gasket goop will likely do a fine job of that. Anyhow, here we go. I'll get it going. Yeah, it's fairly goopy and messy, but it's a reasonably even coat all the way around. I should, right here, it's not, not quite right. So 
I don't like to get too much of it on here because then it just squeezes into the into the oil pan area and the oil filter has to look after it and blah blah anyway we'll uh, get a fairly even coat on then I'll put the gasket on and I'll put another coat on top of the gasket so that it's got goopy stuff on both sides now I got goopy stuff all over my finger so I gotta shut off yeah now there there's the uh, gasket in place and goopy stuff all over both sides of it it's a very thin coat on this this uh, side that goes up against the motor because the, it's coming up against plate steel in the motor part you see up here that's all very very uh, what do you call that it's it, you know it's uh, hmm, a graded surface for a better word a machined surface that's a better word okay so now I'll get that in here and put a couple of bolts in it yeah so I was missing a few bolts don't know why but they were not there and then I had these bag full of these bolts there are a whole bag full of them there right they're the right size they're uh, 5 16th inch bolts but they were coarse thread on it so I re-threaded them with this thing here to a fine thread and then stuck them in and they seem to fit just fine and they seem to hold well so that'll be the way it is yeah so there it is it's uh, all up there now the here I am at the that bolt goes right through that bolt here well back in there can you see that that one there goes right through and this one at the very back goes right through so I put them from the top down because I know that the starter which is right goes right in there somewhere let me get a light on that can you see that yeah see where the starter goes if I put the bolt the other way it would be bashing against the starter so I figured I'd get them all going the same way anyhow for the ones that go right through this is I think that's heavier duty bolts for the uh, motor mount two of them there and then this one here is just a normal bolt for to uh, hold the oil pan on on the other side these two bolts here are just slightly longer than the other ones you know enough to make up that distance there so it seems to be all all the way it's supposed to be and the oil pans on there I could put some oil in it and and it'll be good now, I hope. Shouldn't leak. Well, famous last words. Shouldn't leak. It's a British car. We'll see. Anyway, the uh, that's I think that's about all for today. Anyhow, the uh, I'll let it down for the night, and that'll be that. Yeah, here we go. I've got new motor mounts. So one of them goes right here. And to get that off, now I have to support the motor. I've got the motor supported on this side here. I just got it hanging off this strap that's hooked around that uh, the manifold there, the exhaust manifold. So what I'm going to do is let it down and put the car down and just put a stand right underneath here in the center of the motor. And that'll hold up hold the motor up whilst I take this apart and put a new piece in there and might have to jimmy the motor back and forth a little bit then next thing after that I think I'll put the new motor mount back here because these things are subject to wear so I'll do the same sort of an idea but a longer pole I guess to hold that anyhow I gotta work at the one from the top and the other one I gotta work at it from the bottom so right now I'll just get one of my little tripod stands. Here we are. One of these guys, and it'll sit right here. Right here, and I'll just let the motor down on it and go at it from there. I'll show you. There now, you can't really see down there. Wait, I'll look underneath here. Hmm. Oh, everything's in the way. Everything's always in the way. So there, you can see that now, that motor, that stand is holding up underneath the motor mount underneath the uh, the cradle underneath the the uh, oh what do you call that oil pan there's a cradle underneath the oil pan 
and that's holding up, and then I've given it enough enough downward force on that that it's released some of the tension on this thing here so I can move this which is holding that other side up so now I'll just undo those bolts and see if I can get this thing jimmied around and out of there give it a try yeah so here now here's the old one that came out of the bottom of the motor and here's the new one so this part here that's supposed to be um, that's all rubber there, it's allowed to move, but the old one here it's, uh, broke off, so it's really bad. Nothing holding the motor down. This one here, I'm going to put in the new side spot, the side over here on the car, put it down here. So there's one bolt in the back of it and two bolts in the front of it, then it should slide out of there somehow or other. We'll just see what happens here now. Yeah, there I got it out. So there's just, it slides out pretty nice and easy, I'll show you. <clears throat> Excuse me, once you get the bolts out of it. And I've got it held so that I can, wait, I'll show you this too. So it's held, but I can move the motor around pretty easy in there and just push it back and forth a little bit, which helped an awful lot getting bolt number two out. But it just, wait, can you see that? See this? The bolt here in the middle, it just slides into that slot right here. And then the thing is ready to mount. So this side here is like I've got it upside down here. Towards the front is the metal bit towards the front here. And this outer sh outer sheet comes off of there and goes on to the to the new one. But the bolt that goes into this hole over here is very difficult to get out. You have to use just a normal, a normal wrench. Like, can't use any sockets or you can't use any anything like that. You just got to use a. I wonder where I put the damn thing. I must have put it somewhere special. Here it is. Here, this kind of wrench here, just with a little bit of a thing on it so you, a little bit of an angle on it so you can get it in there but it's pretty tedious turning it out the other ones all the other ones you can use a like a ratchet on or something so they're just one that's difficult now I gotta just break this free which I hope is fairly easy I'll put what I'll do is I'll put the uh, nut on the end of it here hold it in the vise and then pound it out and see what happens yeah there now I cleaned it all off on the grinder over there on the sander belt over there, that one, and then I uh, just sprayed some black paint on it there. I'll let it dry for a little bit and then I'll put it all back together again. And that will be motor mount number one done. Next motor mount I'll do is the transmission one after I get this one done. Let's see what it goes like. Yeah, not as hard to get back on there as it was to get off of there, but a little bit of a challenge. Anyhow, what I've done is I've tightened that nut and I've tightened that nut there. Now I'm going to go, I've, I've put the nut on the holder on the back side of it here, the third one, and I'm going to release the pressure, take the car up and put the pressure back onto this thing here, this thing here, and that will uh, let that, let the motor mount sit down in its proper place maybe. See what happens here, like you'll see the motor, it'll, It'll drop into place a little bit because I've got it pressured, pushing up from below. <coughs> and you see that? Maybe, maybe you did. <coughs> so now, all the pressure is sitting on the motor mount again, except like, or the proper amount of pressure is sitting on the motor mount, because that side there is just being held up by that. And now this is supposed to be supposedly down in the right spot, and I'll tighten up that third bolt, which is in right in there. You can't really see it. It's hidden behind all this metal work. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, there it is. Didn't have any big wrecks or anything. It seems to be holding all right. Now the two bolts that go in, one over here, one over here, they're a half inch drive on them or 13 millimeter. And the one in behind here is like 11 16 or 17 
I've used a 17 millimeter on it. So, and the one in behind here has got a self uh, locking type of nut on it. But the new, here's the old, here's the old one right there, and the length of the nut, and the new one. The length of the nut is just slightly shorter on the new one than it is on the old one, so the locking mechanism may not do what it's supposed to do. I tighten them up pretty damn tight, and I'll check into them after a bunch of miles and give them a retighten and see what happens, see if it needs anything. So that's all I know for that. Yeah, so this uh, right here is where this transmission mount thing goes in. I haven't figured out how it goes in yet, but I presume I have to take out these bolts here and those bolts there and there and then drop this down whilst holding the transmission up. So, to that end, I need the thing to hold the transmission up. So here I've got a jack, right? A bottle jack. I've got this nice little piece of pipe that I don't know where it came from, but it's a nice little piece of pipe. And if I weld that on top of that piece of pipe, that'll hold reasonably steady. Then, this pipe here will weld onto that one there. And then I'll put an end on that up there, whoo, way up there, to uh, put the, hold the transmission up. I'll see how that works out. I'll show you when I get it sort of put together. There's something I learned a while ago about welding. Take the rubber gloves off when you're welding because if you get a spark in that welding glo rubber gloves, it doesn't go away. Yeah, there now that's, uh, I welded this on to pipe onto this little piece of a cradle that I made. And then I've got this other piece welded up and set to go. So I'll just turn it over and weld the pipe onto that get it leveled up properly and see how it works out. There you go. One transmission jack stand. See if it actually works now. Like I might have to put it on a on a block or something or else lower the car a bit, but that'll give me enough room to work underneath it. We'll see how it works. Yeah, I like the friendly giant look way up, way up there and that seems to work all right. So I pumped it up and I could see it releasing pressure on here, so I'd be able to take off these things and see what I can come up with. Yeah, so here I am. I have the new one in my hand. And you can see through that hole in the middle, which is that bolt right there in the middle. So I presume that that bolt goes right into the transmission, and that's where it holds it on the transmission. These two bolts on the outside hold it to the housing. So I'll, what I'll do now is I'll take this one out and I'll loosen off these ones here a little bit and maybe just drop the one side and see if it'll slide out of there. See what happens. That looks like again it's going to be a 17 and these ones they're not half inch, they're like the uh, 7 16th or something like that. Yeah, yeah, so there it's off and I took off this whole bracket but I didn't get it much farther than here because uh, let me turn around this cable here, which holds on to there. I suppose I could take that off if I wanted to, but I don't need to. Is a uh, a brace to keep the motor from pulling forward when you give it torque, I guess. The um, So those bolts here come off pretty easy and they're held on above inside the inside the car. And in the Barney Rubble car, you can see where they are up here. Over there, right there somewhere. Yeah, right there somewhere. And so, same on the other side, but it's not a, the other side's not a Barney rubble car. So now, I'll just get these bolts off here. The reason I'd let it down was because these things here, there's a nut on the other side that you have to hold. So it's just as easy to take it down as not. So, I'll take it that part out and put the new piece in and put it back up into place. And it looks like my little transmission holder is doing a fine job holding that transmission up. There's other stuff here, some wires. wonder what those wires are for. Hmm. I guess we'll find out one day. 
going to be a lot of work tracking down the wiring in this car. Oh yeah, that wire goes right up in here. So it's supposed to be in there. And that likely gives you neutral light and all that kind of stuff. So I'll hook that on before I carry on too much farther. And I lied about the size of the nut. So it's a 19 or a 3 quarters, a big nut in the middle. And then the other ones all around the outside are half inch because they looked smaller because I thought the uh, middle one was a 17. Anyway, that's my story. I'm going to stick to it. I'll get it switched out and see what I can come up with. Yeah, there we go. Got that. This all back in there, all right. Not quite in the right spot there yet, but I'll get that sorted out soon. The um, one bolt over here, this bolt over in this side right there, is stripped. So you can't tighten the nut onto it. So I'll have to, and it's hooked up with this bolt here on a on a thing. So I'll have to cut that off of there and put a new bolt in. The other ones here are all tightened up good. I had to replace these two bolts here, one there and one here, because they were both stripped. You know, just since since 1980 and rattling around in here, I guess that's tough on nuts and bolts. I'll see what I can do about it. Yeah, there now. There's motor mount number one up there. That's the uh, passenger side upper. Motor mount number two goes right here. That's on the lower driver side, sort of, but it hooks just below the motor and onto the onto the subframe. Motor mount number three, or transmission mount, goes right in there, and that's all done. Replaced a couple of bolts here, replace this bolt here, and all the rest are okay for now. They tighten down to be able to and hold the, hold the threads. So that's all right. Now next on the list is, I don't know, maybe I'll have a look at that clutch assembly business. Pull that apart and uh, see about putting a new one on there. Yeah, there we are. I like doing things twice. Now, this part here came out, which is pretty simple. The rod that was, that goes from here to here, there's a rod that actuates the uh, clutch mechanism through here. Now, I left the original one in there. It looked okay, not bent or anything. The new one was, is here on the bench. And, and to get that, into the spot, I'd have to take the whole transmission out and, uh, and figure it out that way. So, until such time as I need to put a steady or a clutch bearing in there, I won't be doing that. Then, disaster averted because these, these bolts here, that bolt there and that bolt there, they're new ones. And I stuck, I put the old ones in and don't you know this one here didn't hold, it stripped threads. These new ones are just, you know, a quarter inch longer and they seem to be holding all right. So, I'll just let that be and I happen to have a box full of nuts and bolts, or a box full of bolts here. They're all Allen key heads, but that's all right with me. They seem to do the job, and this is the one that failed. The, uh, actually, that's not the one that failed, the other one failed. This one here held all right. The threads on that one looked not bad, but the other one, the threads were a little bit worn, and uh, so, put new threads, put a new new bolt in, here's the other one, here's the one that, that failed, and the threads on that are just a bit, bit flat side, but it was going into this aluminum, this, this bell housing's uh, aluminum cast, and so it would be a hell of a job to try and re-thread that. But I guess if I had to, I could have. But we're all, it's okay for now. Yeah, so now that I've got the uh, slave cylinder changed down there for the clutch, this is the clutch master cylinder. So I'll take that off. Somebody has already had a go at it or didn't go at it in there. I don't know. Can you see that back in there? It's supposed to be hooked onto the back of the clutch cable. Clutch clutch thing, uh, whatever you call that, pedal, but it's not hooked onto anything up there. So, somebody's headed out or in or 
somebody was trying to do something with it. So I'll put it, I have a new one, I'll put it in there and, and that'll be one more thing out of the way. Yeah, no, there's the, uh, the old clutch cylinder. It's, well, I don't think it's that old. I think somebody put a new one in there, but who knows, eh? It's hard to tell. They never did get it hooked up or something never got hooked up. Anyway, the new one, I have a new one and I'll put it in. It comes out of right there on the wall. So it's pretty simple to get in and out of there. This time here, I'll hook it up to the clutch um, pedal. Yeah, now there's the, uh, the new one. It looks quite a bit better than the old one. The old one might have been original equipment, who knows. But this pin here doesn't look like it's the right thing. It's got a, a lot of wobble in there. I'll check it out on the, on the clutch pedal side and see. Yeah, there we go. The clutch pedal is in. I get this light out of the way. In the way. Anyhow, there. There's kind of the, the idea of it. The new arm comes out through there. And that pin is actually the right pin because it sits in there pretty snug. And then the spring goes on to keep it to, like so. It's got, it'll come back to the original location. Or the proper location. Anyway, that's in. The pedal part is mostly off, but I'll fix that sometime soon. There's uh, some wiring to do up here and figuring out what the hell all this stuff is about before I get too far ahead. We'll see what goes on. While I've uh, got the Barney Rubble business on, I'll, I'll Take a look up in there but for starters next that's the end of the day today because it's friday and it's time to sum it all up i'll bring the car down so we did some work here this week on the car and then we did some work on the what some people call the facility Anyway, we're back on the car full-time for a while. Well, depending on... No, not full-time. I've got to do some gardening, but farming, but that'll come along. Anyway, this, uh, I decided to do some mechanical work instead of, I was getting tired of all that grinding and welding. So mechanical work is coming along, and I did get a hold of the guy today to, uh, mm -hmm got the carburetor kits coming for it and he said this might be a hint for anybody else that's got one of these things he said that the uh, the float levels inside these carburetors are very sensitive to being level and he said you should change the uh, motor mounts especially the transmission motor mount because otherwise the uh, the back carburetor which you see it sits a little bit lower that float than this float it sits a bit higher so the back carburetor one it'll uh, it'll uh, doesn't like being out of level anyway there's a little bit of a hint we'll see how, see how that goes along and uh, one of these days we'll get it running again and see what happens anyhow that's all for this week hope you enjoyed it keep on coming back you know there'll be more Make sure you press that like and subscribe button if you ever got this far in the video, hey? Bye for now. There's Tony. Just a purring at me. Tony usually comes around about this time of day trying to find a way into the house. Okay, let's go. Yeah, that's what I say. Meow. Here we go.